Welcome back friends. Let's take a look at Legion of Superheroes Before the Darkness Volume 1. This is the direct follow-up to this guy here, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes Volume 2, which I covered in a previous video, so check that out if you're interested. Uh, in that volume, that was the, the end of an era, sort of. Uh, Superboy here, at the end of this volume, leaves the Legion of Superheroes, so he's no longer Part of that team he's he's gone back to his time so now the book becomes just legion of superheroes no superboy involved and so this kicks off a brand new era for this team and for this comic book series and uh yeah let's just let's just get in here so most of the stories in here are written by jerry conway most of the art in here is done by jim janes there is some steve ditko there's one issue by Jim Sherman and Joe Staten. I think there's a Rick Estrada in here somewhere. But yeah, most of this is Jim Janes. Most of this is written by Conway. There's a, one or two stories by Cupper, uh, Paul Kupperberg, E. Nelson Bridwell, and Jim Dimitteis. This covers issues 260 to 271 of Legion of Superheroes. And we also get the three issue miniseries Secrets of the Legion of Superheroes, issues one, two, and three. So let's kick this off. Uh, one thing about this volume, the the cover art for all these issues, uh, I think most of them are done by Dick Giordano, except for one of them, which is by George Perez, and that's the one that's reproduced on the dust jacket here. The covers for these books are beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I wish the interiors were as good as the, the covers, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's just go through each, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through each issue and uh, kind of give a, a, kinda, a quick overview without spoilers of what happens here. So we've got, which one is this? This is issue 260, this, yeah, 260, come to the circus and die. So what we've got here is a space circus and there's like a serial killer who's, who's basically stalking them and killing off members of the space circus. So who do they turn to for help? They go to the Legion of Superheroes. And um, some of them, well, not all of them, it's a huge team, but, but some of them are going to take off with this space circus and try to solve this mystery and catch this killer. Basically, they join the circus and try to lure this mystery serial killer out into the open. Um, pretty standard stuff, kind of a standard whodunit mystery story. Moves, goes into the next issue, 261. Beautiful cover again. Wow. And again, Dick Giordano. Really nice. Um, yeah, moves into the next issue. Some action, some um, mistaken identity stuff. And this one, this overall, the story was kind of plain, you know, kind of run of the mill, honestly. It gets a little trippy at the end, which is always nice. I like that about Legion of Superheroes. It, things they're not afraid to. This is a series that is not afraid to get weird, um, with the sci-fi and and space elements. Next issue is two sixty two. This one is written by Jerry Conway. Artist is Jim Sherman. This is probably my favorite issue in this collection. Um, so what we've got here is the other half of the Legion of Superheroes. They have gone to space with. R.J. Brand, who is their benefactor, he's this this old guy here. He's their benefactor. He is he was super mega rich. He lost all his fortune in the last in a few issues back. And uh, these legionnaires have gone to space with him to help him reclaim that fortune. How how does he do that? Well, he has this technology that allows him to make new stars, which is pretty lucrative in the thirtieth century. So they're out there making new stars. And uh, they suddenly get attacked by space pirates who are, who are flying around in space in this pirate ship. <laughs> I love it. Uh, also, I love the art. Jim Sherman's artwork is fantastic in this issue. It's incredible. So anyway, they get attacked by these space pirates. There's a whole mystery as to like, who the heck are these space pirates? Why are they flying in space on a pirate ship? Why did they attack us? Um, and, you know, they solved that mystery pretty quickly. 
just kind of a, a nice, fun, single issue story. Then we got 263. This is Day of Judgment. So written by Jerry Conway, art by Jim Janes, and inked by Dave Hunt. And uh, so we got a few parents of the Legion of Superheroes. They've been invited to visit them at the headquarters, but turns out it was all a ploy by this new villain, Dagon the Avenger, to capture them. And um, he succeeds in taking them all hostage. He, and then he, sent, he, he sends like a note to taunt them, taunt the Legionnaires. Be like, haha, I've got your parents. What are you gonna do? So then there's this mad rush. They're, they, you know, they're, they're all, the Legionnaires are trying to find their parents. They're all worried and um, here's Dagon taunting them. <laughs> Goes to the next issue, Dagon's Cavern of Doom. So here they're, they're all out to try and find their parents and figure out who this Dagon guy is. They've split off into groups, obviously. That's what the Legionnaires always do because there's so many of them. They split off into groups to take care of different, each with different little mini missions. Uh, Dagon sets some traps. He's uh, trying to trick, you know, trick the Legionnaires, uh, playing mind games with them and stuff, taunting them that, with the fact that he's got their parents hostage. Uh, eventually, you know, kind of more standard storytelling stuff. They they find Dagon, they and uh, save the day. All right, so next issue is 265. This one is entitled The Brigadoon Syndrome. It's plotted by Jerry Conway, scripted by James DeMatteis, art by Jim James and Dave Hunt. So this one's about Tyrock, who I guess is the single black member of the Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's Bronze Age comic, you know, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so this goes into the origin of his people because they're, while they're human, they don't live in our dimension. They live in, in another dimension on this floating rock. So the question is, how do they get there? Why are there humans there? And basically, Tyrock explains that his people, his ancestors, like 1400 years ago, they were captives on a slave ship and they managed to overtake their captors and take over the ship. However, they got caught up in a storm, which actually turned out to be like some kind of dimensional storm and landed them in another dimension on this, this floating rock. So being stranded there, uh, fortunately, there is enough resources for them to survive, not just survive, but thrive. So they, they settled there and for like the next, the next 1400 years, um, built their society, built their civilization, and eventually became quite technologically advanced and almost like um, like a land of, of wonders, really. It's, it's almost like, kind of like Wakanda, as if you want to talk about like a parallel, only that's Marvel and this is DC. So that, that's pretty much the, the whole point of this story was just to talk about his origin or the origin of his, uh, the people he comes from. Every once in a while though, their dimension crosses over with ours, which is what allows Tyrock to um, step into our dimension and be a member of the Legion of Superheroes. So this issue probably was the weakest one out of the whole collection for me. And a lot of it had to do with just the way, some of the, the awkwardness with, um, the story here like how how they're depicting the evolution of Tyrock's people like it's very I guess it's very Eurocentric like okay they're tilling the fields they've they've reached a stage where they're farming there's agriculture and they're building these cabins but the cabins are like the kind of stuff you'd see in frontier America um, this guy here is blacksmith thing he's wearing blue jeans and a tank top now they've got like this Victorian era clothing it's like it doesn't really make any sense that this, this group of people, like why their fashion or their ar architecture, why their society in any way at all would, would develop almost parallel in, in like a mirror image of how things developed in Europe or America. So that just kind of feels like lazy storytelling. Um, yeah, I think anytime you get these Bronze Age comics that try to deal with colonialism or, or racism, they either kind of are, they're successful for their time and kind of are progressive for their time or they're very, very awkward and clumsy. There's like no in between. It's just one or the other. I think this one's more of the latter for me. So we'll just move on to the next issue.
Okay, next issue, Legion of Superheroes 266. This one is entitled Cantu. So we start off with Duo Danzo and Bouncing Boy, who they recently got married and they retired from the Legion of Superheroes. And they, of all things, of all places, they retired to this ice planet because they want to help this colony on this ice planet establish themselves. They're in a nice cavern. They find a space genie. His name is Cantu. Um, he quickly takes off into space. Bouncing Boy sends a warning to the Legionnaires, Element Lad and Colossal Boy. They, they pick up the, the warning and they take off in their spaceship to intercept Cantu, who, because he's a space genie, flies up to them and punches them barefisted. <laughs> punches the spaceship barefisted. Um, yeah, this, this issue, this story is bonkers and pretty fun, I thought. Um, yeah, it goes into the next issue. He's defeated Element Mad and Colossal Boy, but they're rescued by Duo Damsel. Meanwhile, Cantu is out there terrorizing the galaxy, and he's going to make his way to Earth. And the, uh, oh, there's a bit of a backstory here, and it involves the Owens, the, the Guardians, uh, who, who created the Green Lantern Corps. Always cool to um, tie in a bit of DC lore into these stories. That's neat. Uh, yeah, Cantu, you know, attacks Earth. And there's, there's a confrontation, standard superhero stuff. Then we get this short story here by Paul Kupperberg, art by Steve Ditko. Um, there's, I saw that and I was like, what's Peter Parker doing in here? Um, but no, that's just uh, Steve Ditko kind of recycling a face, I guess. Um, you know, it's really neat to see Steve Ditko's approach to storytelling after a few issues of Jim Jane's. Um, so this is fairly early on in Jim Jane's career. And yeah, it's so different. You go to Steve Ditko and he's just like almost effortlessly telling the story in a very strict grid layout of panels. Yeah, very much like a six panel grid. Uh, this story is about how the Legionnaires, this is a flashback story about how they got their flight rings. And it's a pretty quick one, like just a few few pages. Then we come to the big story, which is uh, the one you see on the front of this book. This is an awesome cover, man. This is by George Perez, inked by Terry Austin. Beautiful, beautiful cover. So this one is written by J.M. Demetrius, art by Steve Ditko. It's called Life After Life After Life. This one is weird. <laughs> this one is super trippy. Um, no surprise because it's J.M. JM Demetrius writing this and you've got Steve Ditko drawing it and just going nuts with some of the, the concepts here. So we've got this villain <laughs> called Dr. Maya Vale and check this out. So it's an old guy, kind of looks like the stranger from Marvel Comics. Old guy, white hair, white mustache, wearing like a chainmail tunic, a like <laughs> Ike chain, um, cowboy, purple cowboy boots, I think. I don't know. But it, definitely a cowboy hat and like these green gumby arms and a blue blazer. Yeah. <laughs> Floating around in a golden throne. Oh, and a yo yo. I don't know, man. <laughs> this, I saw this and. Um, I was like, yes, I can tell this story is going to be good. <laughs> uh, so Dr. Mayavale, this is really interesting. He's a space monk and he's been reincarnated a number of times. And through all of his reincarnations, he had dedicated himself to doing good. When he comes back to his present self, he realizes, oh, I've done so much good. I need to balance out the universe. So he's gone back and reincarnated himself a bunch of times, and now he's dedicated his his new lives to evil. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. He's captured some of the legionnaires, and he's tormenting them. This is uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Like this story is weird, and this like this is the kind of stuff I I love and I look for <laughs> when I read these weird Legion of Superheroes Bronze Age stories. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Next, we come to 
Issue 269. This is the return of a supervillain team, the Fatal Five. So we start off with like there's an election going on on Earth for the new president. And in the future, um, presidents are chosen. Well, the candidates are chosen based on skill set and background. And, uh, and then they kind of are um, obligated to run for president. So Colossal Boy's mom has been uh, one of the ones who's been chosen as a candidate. And these are like, uh, kind of like the elections that are happening now. Um, and then the Fatal Five, they show up. Uh, they're being manipulated by this, this man in the dark. He's called the Dark Man. And uh, he's manipulating the Fatal Five, giving them uh, uh, like, kind of ways to take down the legionnaires and that's basically what the fatal five do they capture the legionnaires they kind of divide and conquer the good guys here and we move into the next issue which is about who is the dark man so then of course there's obviously we're talking about the mystery of who the dark man is and then like timberwolf is like the one of the few of them who who um has escaped capture and he's doing his like Wolverine thing to go in Lone Wolf and he's gonna find and free his comrades. And then there's kind of like, uh, yeah, the Legionnaires, all of them being trapped in different ways, escaping their traps. And then goes into the final part of this three part story. What is the Dark Man? So, not only have do they need to know who is the dark man they have to figure out what is this guy um because he is he is impossible his existence is impossible so so there's that mystery there now this is a this is an important issue because one of the fatal five his name is block ultimately joins the team and that will have um hell that'll have an impact in future stories now we come to the miniseries, Secrets of the Legion of Superheroes. So this one's about R.J. Brand. He's caught some kind of space fever, and he's dying. Um, the Legionnaires are, of course, very upset about this. And in the midst of them trying to figure out what they can do to help Brand, there's these two intruders who break into the HQ, and they, um, they kind of look up all the personnel files of the different Legionnaires. So... This miniseries, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's uh, like every page basically is a recap of the different origins of the members of the Legion of Superheroes. So I'm assuming this miniseries was sort of like a way to get kids up to speed, any new readers up to, up to speed on who these characters are and where they came from. So it's basically three issues of um, character recaps. But uh, this is... At the, the very last issue, there is a very significant event or reveal, and uh, it has definite repercussions through the rest of this series. Because I have read, uh, I have gone ahead and read volume two, which I'll do a review of later. Um, yeah, there's, so the, you actually can't totally skip this kind of recap flashback miniseries. There's actually um, something significant that happens in it, which I won't spoil. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for this volume of Before the Darkness, Volume 1. Let's talk about uh, the review, an overall review of this, this volume. Uh, I'd say that overall this is a much weak, weaker, much weaker volume than the previous one. Uh, and this is Volume 2 of Superboy and Legion of Superheroes. And it's also weaker than Volume 1, which I don't have here to show you. But yeah, um, this is definitely a weaker volume in terms of story and art. I It really feels like, also because Jerry Conway writes most of these stories, um, they feel very formulaic. And there's not a lot of interesting stuff that happens in them. Yeah, just, just kind of standard um, superhero meets bad guy, superhero solving mystery type stuff. There's, yeah, nothing nothing epic. Like, especially in the previous volume, this one here, you had the Earth War saga. 
and you had a lot of amazing art by uh, Joe Staten. I think there was some Jim Starlin in here, uh, Jim Sherman, like wonderful, wonderful art all throughout this volume. Uh, you come to this volume and this is, like I said, this is Jimmy Jean's earlier work, uh, the figure work, the storytelling, the layouts. It's not at the same level as some of the other artists who've worked on Legion of Superheroes. So you've got, yeah, you, you have that with the art and then you've got kind of like the so-so average stories overall it's not a strong volume which is unfortunate uh, it's interesting when you read the the introduction i read that after i finished this book the intro is by paul levitz and he he basically apologizes for uh, the issues in here the stories in in these issues and he does kind of point out that yes uh jerry conway wasn't a favorite series or set of characters for jerry but he was a good soldier so you can tell it comes across this this is not something um, Conway was probably all too passionate about. But yeah, um, there we go. Before the Darkness, Volume 1. Um, overall, okay. Average. Not as great as the other two volumes. I'd still read it. I don't know if I would reread this. But there we go. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you've got any comments if you've read these stories if you love these stories or grew up with them let me know in the comments i would love to know what you think and uh, i will talk to you next time thanks so much for watching hit the like or subscribe button if you like these videos it really helps me out so thanks and uh talk to you soon bye